Hello everyone, welcome to the show. You're watching The Director's Cut Season 2. I'm Greg, your host, and today we're talking about animation. Why? Well, in Malaysia, animation is projected to be about 600 million or more. That's how much it's worth. And that's why in the studios today, we have someone very special, a producer who produces award-winning shows like Animals and Time Traveler Luke, and she works with South Korea and Australia to produce these kind of shows. It's going to be very exciting, a lot of things to learn. I have a lot of things to ask her. And uh, before you meet my guest, let's take a look at her clip, okay? And as usual, roll it! And that was a clip from Giggle Garage, a company that we are uh, interviewing today. And with us in the studio is uh, Madam Juhaida Jomin, or we call her Edi. Edi, welcome to our studios. Thank you so much, Greg. And thank you so much yeah. for having me. No, not at all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Edi, I mentioned a little bit about you, uh, that you have been with MDEC for so many years before you actually uh, went all out into the animation industry. So, I mean, from, from your company and yourself, a big company today, uh, it's like a superhero. So we want to know the origins of the superhero. <laughs> so can you share with us a little bit about your experience uh, working in MDEC? I, th I think for, for me, it was uh, such a simple beginning for where, on, on how I ended up uh, doing animation. So, well, basically, Growing up as a kid, I always loved to make, make up stories. So that's, that's all. I always daydream and being raised in the middle of a paddy field in Sabah, that gives oh, you nice. like a lot of opportunity to be creative. You have to fill up your time. And I remember telling my grandma that I wanted to pursue study in animation. And she was asking me, like, animation? It's like, what kind of uh, job you'll end up with? I didn't know that I wanted to be an animator. It's just that I like to tell stories, but then I also like to watch a lot of cartoons. So, uh, but never occurred in my mind that I'm going to be doing, to be making cartoon at the end of the day, right? So when I see the opportunity and there is a, a university offering this kind of courses, so I, I jumped to the opportunity. And of course I have to get uh, permission from my parents and from my grandparents, right? So. I was telling her that, yeah, I'll, I'll be making cartoon. And she's like in this belief, like people actually pay you to make cartoons because for them it's like you're just doodling, right? So right. Um, but fast forward, uh, I end up studying in the multimedia university. So I was the first batch of um, animation student in 1997. So it was like, wow, oh. 14, wow. Uh, 24 years ago. So that's wow. how, that's where my journey in animation started. Uh, I didn't know you, you were in the first batch. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> On graduation, of course, I, uh, MDEC was there in, in Cyberjaya. And of course, uh, this is the agency that started it all. So I joined MDEC in uh, 2000, year 2000 right at the ground zero of uh, the anima animation industry that we all know now. So that's 20 years ago, uh, young, fresh grads. 
Right, right. And, uh, and you formed uh, your own company, Giggle Garage, in uh, 2010, right? With your partner, uh, Zeno Gabing, right? And both of you are from Sabah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah my partner, my business partner, Zeno Gabing, and, and also my life partner. So we are pretty much like stuck to each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think starting in 2010, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, you took about five years uh, to sell your original IP at that time, right? Was it uh, Origanimals at that time? Yeah, when we started uh, Giga Garage, we, we wanted to create a company that is um, focusing on creating original IP because that's what we are passionate about. But of course, looking on the business side, uh, we have to make sure the company is uh, sustainable. We are able to basically um, make sure that the, we, we can run. So the first few projects that we actually were doing when we set up the company is uh, service. So the first two years, we are pretty much doing servicing. And uh, while doing servicing, we are doing development of organimals on the side. So it's like um, we have to be multitasking at the same time. Uh, but it took us uh, like another two years to really develop the show and basically put meat into it, build the Bible, pitch to broadcast, the get feedback, bring back to the studio, make changes and go out again. So it's, 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 it's basically a tedious process of back and forth because there is a lot of things that you need to learn and you need to know. And we only started the actual production for the show in 2014, basically. What is the most uh, interesting thing or most useful thing that you can share that you've learned uh, through this process of this pro uh, pitching, development, uh, changing, amendments and so on? Actually, mm. all this process, whatever you learn from your first IP, you will take it to your next IP. So in terms of the learning curve, it becomes less and less and less. So uh, it's, it's almost like a practice. And um, what mm. I really learn about all this process is um, broadcasters are actually quite generous with their opinions. I mean, uh, if you listen carefully and they will give you a lot of knowledge, like uh, what kind of restriction for certain broadcasters, for certain age group, what kind of characters that works and all this. And, and a lot of time for first time creator, you become too attached to your show, too attached to your design, to your character. And you, you don't want to change anything because, oh, this is the best version of you and this is your baby and nobody can touch it. So mm. these are the kind of um, uh, things that you, you cannot uh, uh, practice, basically. When you create a show, you have to be open about changing or even scrapping the whole thing and start over mm. again. Because mm. this, is a, this is what it's all about. You are not making show for yourself. You're making it for your audience uh, and your broadcasters know best about what works, right? So I think right. that's a lesson on number one that we learned. Wow, wow. Yeah, this is a good takeaway. This is the first takeaway. It's the first lesson you learned, the first takeaway in this show today. <laughs> you, you have to be open for criticism, basically. Uh, you, you, you shouldn't take anything personally. And some of the comments can be quite harsh, uh, but for you, at the end of the day, you want to make the show work. Right? So, mm. uh, yeah, I think the, mm. the more open you are to criticism and changes and you, you get better in, in basically pitching or in, in getting a show done. Right, it takes a lot of patience, uh, patience as well, right? Yeah, because you can't, you can't rush this process. And we'll take a break and we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. You're watching Director's Cut Season 2. We're talking about animation on this show. I'm your host, Greg. And today in our studios, we have a special guest, Edie from Giggle Garage. What kind of people are you looking for? Um, like in that team, uh, you know, do they have to be good with visuals as well because of visual concepts? Or are they just people who are from the writer kind of background? Like they have idea of stories, you can write stories. Or it's a mix between the two. What kind of people are you looking for? It is, it is a mix between the two. 
um, we have um, some illustration illustrator who who are good at um, basically visual visualizing the the, the concept. Mm -hmm. And we have character designer. We have director, uh, and sometimes we even bring in uh, an external story artist or storyboard artist uh -huh. to basically create the mix. But most importantly, uh, this group have to be passionate about telling stories. Uh, we cannot mm. put someone who 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 are not interested in creating story in a story department, right? So mm. I think regardless of whatever skill they have, as long as they are passionate about. Uh, brainstorming a story, um, basically contributing in terms of the, the the ID development, and that should be fine. Sometimes we have animators in the story team as well. What, what do you think is harder to find? Uh, good animators or good storytellers? I think these two can overlap sometimes, you know, because good animators have to be able to tell good story at the same time. You, you, you cannot really animate exactly based on the storyboard or based on script. Uh, sometimes they have to add in additional acting, or additional uh, little action that basically um, push up the quality of animation even better. So I, I do um, say that, I mean, animators are storytellers as well because they're the mm. one who add life to the animation. I, I'm, I'm asking all these questions because it's, uh, it's kind of linked to training, it's kind of linked linked to the educational institution in Malaysia, you know. Do you find, do you find the graduates uh, from the institutions in Malaysia are well trained or is there something which you feel that they should have but they don't have? Uh, I, I guess I'm looking for ways to, to improve, to help improve the, the training uh, situation in Malaysia, yeah. I, th I think most of the syllabus and the courses that's available right now, uh, they are three years or maximum four years, basically, for you to get a diploma or degree in animation. And um, this field, there's so many areas that need to be covered, and definitely you cannot ca cover everything within mm. three years. And mm. more often than not, storytelling is basically the least in the syllabus. You learn about drawing, you learn about technical, um, and basically um, a bit of the, the business structure or production structure. But the storytelling is, I think sometimes it becomes like elective or if you like to write script and then you can take additional course. So I think this is one area that we, we can start early, even in the first year of, of, of uh, animation course that they're in. I think storytelling is a skill that can be useful in in any uh, any stage of production. Mm. Yes, I, I was getting to, towards that. <laughs> then back to animators, right? When you bring in animators, when you hire them fresh, you know, from 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 graduation, right? You hire them. Um, did, do you have to uh, uh, retrain them? Um, yeah, actually, I, I think it's quite um, necessary to retrain most of the people who join us because first the pipeline is different from basically what they learned from school or from other studios, right? So definitely it takes about uh, at least three months for them to basically get used to your pipeline. Uh, but also, I think for especially for the fresh grads, or uh, we also offer an internship program and uh, we call it the uh, Creative Graduate Program, CGP, and we put them in three months or six months internship and uh, basically at the end of the course they they get the certificate uh, if they pass the the, the course and uh, we use this actually as a medium for us to train fresh graduate and uh, it could cover from technical to basically uh, uh, production management to even detail day to day in the production i've i've been talking to some people well a few people from the industry and they're saying that ah oh, you know the local institutions uh, graduates coming out probably not so relevant because you have to retrain them but i'm thinking so i'm asking around for other opinions as well is that just normal because um different companies have different pipelines right yeah and uh, different ways of doing things and i i don't think institutions can can produce graduates that know all the, the uh, which are, who are familiar with all the pipelines in all the companies, right? That's just not possible, right? So I think re retraining is still needed, right? Yeah, and, and also you, you can't expect students to get 
the uh, production experience in a university because they're not just production. They yeah. can be doing like student project, three, of, three minutes or five minutes, but like they don't have like a real deadline that, that production do. They don't deal with clients and directors who keep changing shots. So <laughs> you, you can never get a, a fresh graduate uh, a production ready. So you, you still have to basically expose them to this kind of environment where not everybody will like your shot, that you're going to do five times retakes and all this. So at the end of the day, you have to expose them to real production environment in order for them to be Thank production you ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing that. Yes. Yeah, now I think I want to talk about uh, the projects that you are doing. So you started with Oregon Animals, your, your original IP. Uh, then, then I know you you did quite a, a, a few more, but uh, maybe not in the right sequence. Uh, you did Boeing the Play Ranger uh, with uh, it's a Korean co-production, and then you did Kazoops. Is that also a co-production with Australia? Uh, yes, co-production with yeah. Australian studio. And Cam and Leon is uh, all local, right? Yeah, co-production with Astro. Oh, with Astro, yes, yes. yes. Mm. And your company is award-winning ever since Oreganimals. And now even your latest project, the Time Traveler Loop, right? It's also award-winning. Um, uh, how do you how do you do that? <laughs> well, I guess luck, but <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's a result of, um, of I mean, it's, it's been 10 years and basically um, through all these years and all this um, uh, process of getting feedbacks, I think most importantly is you have to expose your show or idea to get feedback. Otherwise, you will never be able to improve, right? So I think for all our new show, we keep on pitching it to people or broadcaster and getting the input. It could be things that we doesn't we don't want to hear, but I think it is an input, and we keep improving from there. So mm. that's how you basically improve your show. But I think there's another important factor that I would like to highlight here. You can't do everything on your own. We always believe that collaboration and partnership is the best way, is the fastest way to learn. So, like for example, uh, time traveler look, we actually partner with our Korean partner. On top of that, we have few broadcasters behind all, all this show. So this partnership provides us the platform to basically um, improve the show, improve our skill set. We learn from our partner as well as a broadcaster. So I think all our show, except Organimals, we actually partner with other people. And of course, find, find a good partner that that willing to share their knowledge and basically um, willing to take the journey with you. I think that is a key important factor. In, in okay, the... that's another key takeaway. Yes, <laughs> we'll jot it down. There's a lot more to talk about. There's many questions I want to ask, so stay tuned. We're going to take a short break and be sure to come back after the break. And we're back. You're watching Director's Cut Season 2. With us in the studios is Edie, who produces animation. I've got a lot of questions for her. I've read some articles about, you know, uh, companies, Malaysian companies have to, you know, up their level of quality, right? To be able to, to go into the international market. What do you think of, like, what, what would it mean, quality? I mean, over the years, basically having the journey with MDEC, um, we know that the, the, the first 20 years basically is, is a lot more about building the, uh, building the skill set, basically working with institution mm. and basically having an industry created in Malaysia. So I guess we've done that. And then, of course, the next level was uh, encouraging more uh, content creation within the, the local company and that's it's, it's, it's quite visible right now because you see there's a lot more new IPs coming out from uh, from the local creator and it not, not necessarily, necessarily a big company even like a first time creator they now they now have a platform to uh, create their IP and I guess the next stage that we are looking into like 
in 10 years from now is like, how do you elevate whatever we have now? We have creators, we have production house, and they are ready to go to the next level. So I guess it's a continuous work. Um, we have to look now into how to expand this company to become bigger and basically how they will be able to pull with them all the other smaller company. So um, I think um, in terms of what program or what kind of support that we all need next is, is, is basically a support to expand and to go into next level. I guess if you ask every production company or uh, creative company in Malaysia, everyone is aspired to become the next Pixar or the next Disney in Asia, right? So, yeah. and I, it's not impossible. I mean, it's possible. We just have to keep uh, improving our skill, uh, keep training our people. And uh, most importantly, we have to make sure to keep all the good talent within uh, our industry, make sure mm. that they don't run away and <laughs> go to other countries, right? So I guess this is what we need to do now. Yeah, I guess for, for you know, uh, the industry, which is in, in KL, uh, you know, Cyber Jaya, it's very well established already. But I, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, what about Sabah and Sarawak, who's just starting from zero, um, you know, should what, what do you think are the steps that we should take? I think for Sabah and Sarawak, we are just like um, the industry in Peninsula 20 years, let, uh, 20 years ago. We are at the starting point. But the good thing is we now have the experience and the people who we can refer to. I mean, the studios here, right? So I think for me personally, or for Giggle Garage personally, we would like to contribute into building the industry in Sabah and Sarawak. Um, you know, we have the the oldest forest in the world. I mean, mm. Borneo rainforest is older than Amazon. This can be mm. a good background for all the story that we can tell, all the kind of uh, design that we can come up with. And between this, the, the, the two states, we have like more than 80 ethnics. And mm. each ethnics have their own storyline. And I mean, stories, they have folklore. And... These are very rich materials that uh, we can tap into. So it could it could be a very different scenario ten years from now. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I believe Sarawak TV have done a very good job starting up um, uh, launching last year. So I think it's very bright future for Sabah and Sarawak in this in this uh, industry. Well, uh, do you have anything to add uh, before we go? It's a production company and. And as a fellow uh, creator, IP creator, we always encourage collaboration, it, regardless collaboration with international partner or local partner, so that this kind of collaboration not only improve uh, your own skill, it's actually bring everyone in and basically have a collective improvement or uh, elevate everyone in the process. So I think if, if you're a first time creator or new company, uh, don't suffer alone, approach other companies. I think people will be willing to share their knowledge and experience. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's a friendly community. Thank you very much for saying that and to offer that. <laughs> we'll take up your offer. <laughs> yes. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Edie. Thank Edi. you so much for having thank me. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a nice interview with uh, ED from Giggle Garage, we learn a lot. And uh, one of the things that we learned and talked about was how to build an industry in Sarawak. And uh, it's through collaboration and uh, training is important and lots more. So if you're interested to know more um, about films and animation, make sure you join us again next week, same time, same channel on TVS. I'm Greg Wee, your host and I'll see you again. Good night.